Revenant is the newest Warframe in our prime arsenal and he is an absolute game changer. In fact, he's so strong that he might even give Octavia a run for her money when it comes to being the strongest Warframe in super high level content. I know, on paper, the difference between the normal Revenant and the prime Revenant seems to be mostly cosmetic with a little bit of fluff in the numbers, but believe me, Revenant Prime enables a playstyle that didn't really work on the normal Revenant and it is so strong it might even be able to dethrone Octavia as the undisputed queen of level cap content. So in this guide today, we're going to be taking a look at Revenant, I'm going to give you a couple of builds and of course, we're also going to talk about what exactly Revenant Prime can do to be so super powerful. And with that being said, let's take a quick look at his abilities, of course I know he's a well-known frame so we're only going to go over it really briefly. And Thrall is the name of his first skill and what it basically does is turning enemies into allies and have them fight alongside with you against your foes. And that's already basically everything there is to say about it. Pretty nice overall because it can cause some serious distraction in the enemy formations. Mesmer skin is skill number two and this is exactly what's keeping you alive all the time and what earns Revenant the title of being the absolutely most immortal frame in the game. If you cast this ability, you get a set of charges and every time you're hit, you're actually not going to be hit, but the enemy that hit you gets stunned and you lose a charge. Thing goes on until you lost all the charges, but you can recast it any time. The more ability strength you have, the more charges you'll get. And this is super cool because no matter how high the incoming damage, one charge will always block off one hit, no matter if it's from a level 1 enemy or from a level 10,000 one. Skill number three, Reeve. You turn into some sort of cloudy form and dash forward and all the enemies that you touch with this lose a certain percentage of their maximum health also regardless of their level. So no matter if they're level one or level 10,000, they're always going to lose the same percentage of health, which as you can maybe imagine is pretty huge and we're gonna abuse the living hell out of this. And lastly, our ultimate ability. I'm not even gonna try to read that because I have no idea how this is pronounced. I always call it the spinny thing. You spin around and if the enemies are below level 50, everything is basically gonna die. If the enemies are above level 70, nothing really happens. It's a nice AoE damage dealing ability for normal star chart area. You can use it to rack up a lot of kills to level up the frame faster. But when it comes to high level steel path content, this one, unfortunately, doesn't get the job done. But alright, let's finally start out with the builds and before we go, one quick disclaimer. This as you can see is not Revenant Prime. This is my normal Revenant but I thought because I already gave it 7-4 I can absolutely use this platform here to showcase all the builds. I promise you they're also going to be 100% the same on Revenant Prime because the only meaningful difference between the two is of course the maximum energy count so we can just showcase it here real quick. First build I have is also the first build that you probably are going to use when you play Revenant and that is the level build. The level build is the cheapo build so to speak and it is used to level up Revenant because as you can tell, leveling up Warframes can be a huge pain, especially if they don't have any abilities that are able to give you some meaningful damage to enemies. Gladly Revenant does have this and this is exactly what we modded for here. In this build we're going to be modding for our ultimate ability because in the level area, which is normal Sanctuary Onslaught, maybe Helene, maybe Hydron, the enemy level is going to be so low that you don't really need crazy damage to kill everything in the room. And what we do here is, you know, we accept the fact that we're going to be dealing with enemies below level 50, so we don't mod for strength that much, give it a bit of Intensify and Molt Augmented if you have to get at least a bit more damage than usual. Use Steel Charge as the Aura because it gives you the most modding space, which is probably what you're going to need if you're leveling him at the moment. And then we go for overextended stretch and auger reach to have the absolute maximum range so we hit really every enemy in the room. Then we go for fleeting expertise because, you know, efficiency is always nice. Transient fortitude for a bit more damage. Continuity so that the duration is not completely out the window and flow so we have a bit more energy to work with. And right now, unfortunately, I'm not sure anymore if this build exactly this way is possible to be done without a single forma. If not, you can also take Augur Reach out and that's surely going to give you enough mod capacity to build it like this. It's not going to be a huge hit in the range. This is what you want to run if you're in the process of leveling him and getting him more forma. 
but I think it's time to go over to the more interesting part, and that would be, of course, the Steel Path build. I have two Steel Path builds for you today, one is the more conservative one, and the other one is the super crazy, absolutely to the brim min max version with all the mod slots, with two arcanes, with a subsumed helmet ability, and three archon shards, so you can expect this one to be the Octavia killer. I should actually go and call it Octavia killer if that fits in the space here, but let's first start out with the normal steel path build that is already pretty sick. This right here is your standard invincible steel path gun runner revenant. What you're focusing on with this here is basically just staying alive and giving as much power as possible to your gun so you can use that to kill the enemies, which is most likely what most people with revenant do in the high level steel path area. So first of all, with this one let's go over the arcanes and the aura because those are connected. Usually with Revenant you were supposed to have Mesmer skin on which keeps you invincible all the time so you wouldn't take damage. However, with Combat Discipline we do take damage and that damage then triggers Arcane Avenger which gives us a big 45% flat on top in our crit chance for our weapon which is a huge buff to a lot of guns. The next thing that this build focuses on is of course a whole lot of ability strength, mostly because we want to have as many Mesmer skin charges as we possibly can have, because it's, you know, more convenient to have more charges so you don't need to recast it all the time and you get even more invincibility and it lasts longer. With this build right now, we're having 20 charges on our Mesmer skin, which is pretty insane, but of course we also use a lot of mod slots for that. For example, we have Power Drift, which gives us ability strength, Blind Rage, Transient Fortitude, Augur Secret, so we have four mods that are just there to give us this sick, insane strength to buff up our Mesmer skin. Oh yeah, and we also got Umbral Intensify to get even more power strength, which I forgot to mention earlier. Unfortunately, however, Mesmer skin takes some time to be cast, and if you get caught off guard, then it might be that you actually die, even though shield gating still exists, before you manage to recast Mesmer skin, which is why we have natural talent right here that increases our cast speed to make sure that we are able to recast Mesmer skin before the shield gating time frame runs out. And with all those mods, our efficiency is in very red territory, so we want to make sure that we have Arcane Energize to somehow buff up our energy economy and Prime Flow to get the maximum energy so far up that, you know, we don't run out all the time. Which is nice, so our thralls last over a minute. And as you see right here, in this build we're not going to use our ultimate ability because we're going to be running in Steel Path, potentially even level cap content, which is enemy level 9999. And in in these territories, this fourth skill, our usual ultimate ability, wouldn't do any damage at all, so we infuse a different ability with the helmet system, which in this case would be Rhino's Roar, which is super great because we have a lot of duration, a lot of strength, and this is the perfect environment for Roar, giving us a 101% damage increase for over a minute. And of course, as we all know, Roar is super huge because it works like a faction mod, which is very, very great when you're looking for big damage output. So that will be the Gunrunner Steel Path build, where you do all the damage with your guns or your melee, whatever you prefer, and the only thing you use your Revenant for is keeping you alive and buffing up your weapons. However, if you were to only play this, it might get a bit boring because you're not really doing anything except, you know, staying alive. It's more like a Steel Path version of Anaros and there's definitely room for improvement. So, with Revenant Prime now out, and with Revenant Prime having more maximum energy, we can actually go and use everything at our disposal to build this. And this thing here is absolutely huge. So. Let's go over what we got here. Again, we have the Combat Discipline Arcane Avenger combination that we also had in the Steel Path the Gunrunner build, which is going to be used in the same way, giving more crit to our weapons. However, this is already where the similarities end. As we see right here, in our normal Gunrunner build, we need Natural Talent for the cast speed, and we need Prime Flow to somehow manage that our energy economy is not going to be completely down the drain. These are two mods that we simply have to use to make up for Revenant's shortcomings. 
However, in the advanced build, we're gonna be making up for those shortcomings with Archon Shards instead, which enables us to use those two mod slots for something completely different. So what we do is we use a yellow Archon Shard to improve our casting speed. It's not gonna be 50%, but whatever this shard gives us is already gonna be enough to utilize the invulnerability period from shield gating. Also, we're gonna go with a blue Archon Shard if you have also, of course, a Tau Forge, which will increase our maximum energy, effectively making any flow mod up lead for this setup and also we're gonna go with another blue one that gives us heal over time so we don't accidentally kill ourselves with the combat discipline which with every kill damages us and with all this out of the way now we have a lot of room to make a really sophisticated build first also in this one we will need a lot of ability strength and I'm gonna tell you why in a second to get there, we use Power Drift, Umbral Intensify, Transient Fortitude, and Blind Rage. If you're wondering why Power Drift is not maximum level, that's simply because of the capacity. If you're willing to add another format to the mix, of course, you can also max that out, but the difference is gonna be super minuscule, so, you know, don't be bothered by that. The reason we need this power strength, again, is gonna be, of course, for Mesmer Skin, giving us almost 20 charges again, but mainly, and this is the bread and butter of this build, mainly, we want to be able to kill level cap enemies, potentially, you know, level 9999 enemies, in a split second with our abilities. And the way we do this is by using Reeve. As I said in the ability overview, Reeve does a certain percentage of enemy damage, meaning no matter the enemy level, they will all die equally fast, it will always take away the same amount of maximum health from the enemy when they are hit. So the higher the ability strength, the more damage we're gonna do with this. So the next thing we're gonna make sure is that we have efficiency. Remember, we don't use any flow mod, so our maximum energy is not gonna be that high. Also, of course, Arcane Energize for the better refill. Next, what we're gonna do is mod for more range with Stretch and Augur Reach. Due to the fact that we need a lot of ability strength, unfortunately, we cannot use Overextended, so Stretch and Augur Reach will be all that we have for range here, but that's totally enough. But why do we need the range here if we're not using the fourth skill? The reason is pretty simple. First, because it increases the area affected by our Reeve, meaning we hit more enemies with it. And second is our subsumed ability. This time, it's not gonna be Roar from Rhino, because this time, we will get Mag's Pull, or you could also use Nidus's Larva, to group up enemies all in one spot in front of us to hit all of them at once with our Reeve right here. Personally, I prefer Pull over Larva from Nidus. The difference is not that big, but Pull first is a one-handed ability, so you're not locked into any animation, and also it's cheaper to cast, which is, again, very beneficial given the fact that we don't have that much Mag's energy in this build and that is very good. So yeah, grouping the enemies up and hitting them with the three. And of course, since fleeting expertise and transient fortitude both reduce our duration, we're gonna be going for prime continuity right here to balance that out a bit. We'll end up at 67%, which is actually super nice. I'm even thinking about dropping prime continuity and replacing it with the normal version, because what this does is the longer the duration, the further you go in your waveform. However, you're grouping the enemies up in front of your face anyway, so the shorter this is, as long as you at least, you know, go one meter further and hit everyone, the shorter this is, the sooner you can start playing normally again and not be caught up in this here. And last but not least, we're gonna use an Augment for our first ability, which is called Thrall Pact, giving us another 25% primary weapon damage for every Thrall that we have on the battlefield, which maxes out at seven. So you can see we're not only going for Reeve right here, we're also going for a gun-heavy approach with Combat Discipline, Arcane Avenger, and Thrall Pact at the same time. And the combination with all of this here is super strong, and I cannot recommend it enough if you have the necessary resources, meaning, you do have these arcanes, you do have the necessary Archon Shards, and you have the subsumed ability pull from Mag or Nidus's Larva if you so prefer, then this build right here is absolutely shredding enemies no matter the level and giving Octavia a good run for her money. But at this point, I need to take a quick break to actually tell you how to make this build work. 
So as I said, our third skill Reeve does cost the enemy a certain percentage of their maximum health. However, even at over 300% ability strength that we have, it would take three or more hits with Reeve to actually kill an enemy because the percentage is simply not high enough. Gladly, however, the damage that we do with this skill is modified by viral status effects, meaning if the enemy has enough viral stacks on them, they are going to die in only one hit from Reeve, no matter the level. I tested this with a couple of secondary weapons and what I found out is you actually need 10 procs of viral with 300% ability strength to actually make that one hit happen and the best secondary that I found out to do that would be, and that's kind of a surprise, not the epitaph, not the static core, not the kuva nu core, it's actually the pox, you know, these infested throwing knives. This right here is my build, a lot of status chance and of course only viral, so that's the only proc that we're gonna get out of them. And what you wanna do in gameplay is, you pull the enemies in with max pull of course, then you throw them four pocks in the face and then you cast your reeve and that should apply enough viral status effects to actually kill all the grouped up enemies in just one quick split second with reeve and due to the low duration, you're back in the action right away again to maybe do that again and again and again or continue shooting enemies enemies with your gun, stocking up on energy and then at the next opportunity when there's a big blob, pull them in again and kill all of them at once. And just in case I didn't state that enough, it might not look super impressive at first because you know there are a lot of AoE nuke frames there that can kill whole rooms of enemies in just one button press, but, and that's very important, this right here works with every enemy in the game regardless of their level. Almost all AoE nuke frames begin to lose their oomph at a certain enemy level range. However, this right here always works. If you stay in a Steel Path survival mission for over 7 hours and you have those 9999 enemies in front of you, yeah, this tactic right here still applies and you still kill everything with it. And the last thing you're definitely gonna want to do is leave the video a like if you found it helpful. I would greatly appreciate the support. Also, if you're looking out for more educational content on this kind of complicated game called Warframe, you're very much invited to leave a sub to the channel. I promise you, there is a lot more to come. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. And until then, of course, good loot.